hello everyone in this very video we are going to be um, continuing with the types of enthalpy um, in the previous video we saw um, heat of formation we saw heat of combustion um, and um, heat of neutralization okay but in this very video we are going to be looking at heat of solution okay so um, this is the heat absorbed or evolved when one mole of a substance is dissolved in a specified number of moles of water okay so uh, when you say um, the amount of it is the heat absorbed or evolved what that means is that it can be endothermic or can be exothermic okay so um, there are some dissolution that requires heat to be added then why there are some other dissolution that gives off heat we are going to see why is that so we have three step process of this solution the heat of this the heat of solution can be regarded as the sum of the enthalpy changes of three immediate steps okay now the breaking of bond that the first step is the breaking of bonds with the solute such as the electrostatic attraction between the two ions okay and this process is endothermic. As a matter of fact, the energy involved here is called lattice energy. So, which is the energy required to break up bonds of electrostatic compounds. So, if we have an electrostatic compound like sodium chloride to dissolve in water, the first thing is separation and that process is endothermic. Now, the second, which is number two, is the breaking of intermolecular attractive forces within the solvent such as hydrogen bonds and so on so the first the first attraction is electrostatic attraction which is between the um within the molecule itself the solute okay and um, why the second is the attraction intermolecular attraction within the solvent okay and that is also endothermic you need heat to break intermolecular attraction no particular name is given to that then number three, the formation of new attractive solute solvent bonds in solution. Because after dissolution, if we dissolve, let's say sodium chloride now, um, after separating into ions, it's going to be sodium ion plus chloride ion. But that's not going to be all. Because each of the ions is going to be surrounded by water. Like the sodium ion is going to be surrounded by the oxygen part of water this way. Okay um like this so the oxygen part of water we are supposed to have hydrogen throughout here you know to show that it is water and that is the solution and that process is exothermic now the name the energy here is called the hydration energy it's called the hydration energy okay which is the energy that is released you know when new bonds are formed between the ions and the solvent molecules now we continue here okay we've mentioned this the three processes of dissolution now heat of now look at this the value of the overall heat of solution is the sum of these individual steps remember there are three steps the first two is endothermic the last step is exothermic so when you add them up we we'll now determine if the overall step is endothermic or exothermic now it continues by saying depending on the relative signs and magnitude of each step the overall heat of solution can either be positive or negative and therefore either endothermic or exothermic i've said that this depends entirely on if more energy was used to break the solute solute and solvent solvent bond or if more energy was released when sol solute solvent bonds were formed so if the first two processes is much higher, it means that the overall process is going to be endothermic. But if the last process, which is hydration energy, is much higher, it means that the overall process is going to be exothermic. Okay? Now, um, to continue here, it says if more energy is released in making bonds than is used in breaking bonds. Okay? In making bonds, remember, that's hydration in breaking bonds that's lattice energy the overall process is exothermic you see that okay so if the enthalpy of hydration is greater than the enthalpy of um, 
um, what is it called now lattice energy sorry if the um, hydration energy is greater than the lattice energy it means that the overall process will be exothermic okay and delta h solution is going to be negative if more energy is used in breaking bonds than is released upon solute solute bond formation then the overall process is endothermic so that is why we say the heat of solution can either be positive or negative okay so that leads us to the next one we see some examples here first of all you can see that the solution of sodium chloride that's table salt in water is endothermic um, i'm going to show you a little um, how to know them okay now this is because the amount of energy used to break apart the hydrogen bonding interaction between water molecules as well as the energy used to break apart the electrostatic attraction between sodium and chloride ions is greater okay than the amount released when new solvent solute solvent attractions are formed between water molecules and aqueous ions in solution i want to believe that that is clear now secondly is dissolving potassium hydroxide is exothermic now why because this is because more energy is released upon formation of solute solvent bonds than was required to break apart hydrogen bonds in water as well as ionic bonds in koh okay so let me quickly give us as a general rule the type of salt that can be soluble in water i mean um, whose enthalpy of solution is positive i mean the kind of dissolution whose enthalpy of solution is positive and the other the enthalpy of solution is negative now let's say here we have positive enthalpy of solution and here we have negative enthalpy of solution now to have positive enthalpy of solution basically is the solution of salts that are formed from strong acid from and strong base strong acids plus strong base so uh, when you see salt formed from strong acids and strong base it is most likely the dissolution of such salt is going to be endothermic okay but in most cases it is exothermic a good example is um um, the solution of acid base or acid and base in water you know if you've ever poured an acid or base in a conical flask and you touch the you dissolve it in water you pour it in water and you touch the bottom you see that um, it is quite hot that shows that it is exothermic so the solution of acid and base you know in water is exothermic then when you have something like strong acid you know, a, a salt that is formed from strong acid plus weak base um, is also in this category. And a salt that is formed from weak acid plus strong base is also in this category. A good example of salt that is formed from strong acid plus weak base um, is, um, let's say, strong acid here can be chlorine weak base, something like this, Na2CO3. Okay, a good example that is formed from weak acid and strong base is something like this ammonium. Uh, uh, okay, strong base. Sorry, let me rub that off. That's not um, uh, weak acid and strong base is going to be something like um, um, sodium. Okay, this is weak acid and strong base. Sorry, strong acid and weak base is something like ammonium chloride. Okay. Because ammonium is from a weak base, chloride is from a strong acid. Sodium here is from a strong alkaline, strong base. CO3 here is from a weak acid. Okay, when you dissolve any of them in water, you know, the solution is, the enthalpy is most likely going to be negative. It's most likely going to be exothermic. Okay, so I want to say thank you for um joining me on this lecture don't forget to subscribe that's my youtube channel below there you know to get updates of classes and you know um